Hi, I'm Randall from Randall's ESL Cyber Listening Lab, providing tips on language learning, culture, and human development. And today, we're going to be doing a broadcast of something that has impacted everyone around the world. And one year ago, the word COVID-19 had not yet entered our vocabulary. And I think that tsunami-like impact was only on a distant shore, a distant horizon, something that had not perme you know, permeated into our everyday lives. But since that time, I think uh, this life, life on this planet has been radically changed and altered. And over 1 million people have died by the virus and countless millions, billions of people have been affected both socially, economically, psychologically. And it's just been such uh, that impact has affected all of us to a, a, a great degree. And in this episode, what I'd like to do is with my guest today, we'd like to share five perspectives on how the COVID-19, the pandemic has impacted and shaped our lives, our world, and our teaching in so many different ways, but also looking forward with hope that the future will be bright for all of us in so many ways as well. And so today, what I'd like to do is I'd like to bring on our guest, Paulina Rojas Siciliano, to talk about this today. So welcome, Paulina, to our episode. Good morning, everybody from Costa Rica. We have a very sunny, beautiful morning today, and I'm super excited to be here. Uh, I've been using your tools for years since I became a teacher, and you've been super helpful. So it's a pleasure to share with you some ideas regarding to this very interesting topic for, for all teachers around the world. Well, great. And so, if Paulina, if we could just jump right in and just tell us a little bit about Costa Rica. Please, first of all, where it's located, and then we'll talk a little bit about the land and its people. Well, Costa Rica is, a, I will say, it's a small piece of heaven in the middle of Central America. We're a small spot right there. A beautiful country full of nature, full of nice people, um, beautiful things. Uh, as you can see, we have, the, I would say, the best uh, beaches in the world. I love Guanacaste. It's one of my favorite places. It's one of the things that I miss the most since the pandemic because we cannot visit uh, the beach as we used to. But uh, soon we'll, we will, sure. Uh, volcanoes, uh, a lot of flora, fauna, and I would say the best coffee in the world. I love coffee. I grew up on a coffee plantation. My family works with coffee. So since I was a very little girl, I've been involved on coffee. Those little red beans is coffee just uh, ready to be picked up and um, and to be enjoyed. It, I know a lot about the process of coffee and it's a very important part of my life, I will say. And when, when people look at those berries, it looks like strawberries or raspberries, but we're talking about coffee. Yes, exactly. Okay, cool. well, great. Uh, Costa Rica is known because of nature, beautiful people, coffee. Super. Well, let's then uh, talk a little bit about uh, you and a little bit about uh, the people in your life, and then we're going to move on to uh, some other topics as well. Okay, great. Well, I'm a single mother of three children, I would say. I have a, a, a girl who is part of my family. She was a former student. Uh, she moved with me so she can go to her internship, so she's part of my family. So I have uh, three children. Um, that's my school. Those flags there is part of my school. I work in a beautiful place. I'm Kaylor's co worker. So we work in the middle of a nature environment that is beautiful, gorgeous, uh, very apart from many difficult things that cities have. I work with the older students. I work with 10, 11, and 12 graders in their uh, English, uh, like in their English for specialties, like uh, for accounting, for informatics, for mechanics. And it's been a really good experience. I've been a teacher for, I think, 14 years now and at uh, that school for eight years. So I've been a teacher for a long. Oh, wonderful. Let's go in. I, this is a question I ask, I ask everyone. You know, how did they become a language teacher? Some people feel they were born to be a language teacher. I had no, absolutely no interest in being an English teacher. We've had other people that said that they have been inspired, that were inspired by teachers in high school. Others wanted to be like Mona from Tunisia said that she wanted to go into archaeology and then felt prompted to go into teaching. 
So if you could briefly share your story and then we'll get into those five perspectives that we're going to be talking about today that have shaped our lives. I think my story is very different and interesting. I, I'm, my mother is a mathematics teacher, so I know a lot about the, the, the word of teachers. But uh, when I was in my last year of high school, I got pregnant and I was a teenage mom. So when I was choosing my career, that was one of the most important things to be able to give my son support, to, give, to be able to give my son some quality time and to have a nice job for him. And so between all the choices I had, teaching was um, the best. And I actually considered becoming a mathematics teacher because I was really good in math and my mom is a math teacher. And then I said, no, no, math is too difficult and people don't like mathematics. So I'll be an English teacher. And I had struggle. I struggled a lot when I was in seven and eight grades. When I start at high school, it was difficult for me. And um, and then at 11, I decided that I wanted to become a teacher and I love it. Like I totally love it. It's the best decision I've ever made. I love teaching. It gives me the opportunity to help people in many different ways, not only in the classroom, but um, encourage them to participate in artistic activities, to develop themselves in any ways that they want to achieve their dreams. I, I think teachers, we have the opportunity to touch people's life and change it. And I think it's the best choice I ever made. And I decided to become a teacher because I wanted to give my son a better future. And I think I've done it. I think he will be, he will agree with me. Well, thank you, uh, Paulina, for that very inspiring story mm -hmm. about uh, finding your way, finding your path forward and uh, making a difference in people's lives. Uh, just yeah. as we... Uh, before we get into some of the ideas, we have Ana Pao, my teacher. Yes. Right. Right. So we have Jorge. And Jorge, I think you're from Bolivia. Remind me. Thank you for joining. Uh, Regina says, thank you for your valuable, optimistic speech. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mona from Tunisia says, uh, hello, Paulina. Hi, uh, morning. All right. And Carmen. Carmen says, greetings from Costa Rica. So excited to listen to you and Paulina in this episode. Uh, Mongia says, amid that pandemic, I can't assign group and pair work, can't see my pupils whole beautiful faces. We're going to yeah. be talking about some of those ideas as well. And so throughout the broadcast, Chris says, excellent, uh, Paulina, inspiring. Uh, mm -hmm. We have, wow, Fabiola, uh, we're proud of you, teacher, Paula. <laughs> my students. <laughs> All right, Leila says, pandemic derived me of students, hugs and kisses. We're going to be talking a little bit about that impact as well. Uh, Mari Paz uh, says, hello. So excited and happy for teacher Paola. And Hugo says, hello, teacher. So you have a lot of people that are really here to support you today. And that is wonderful. And so throughout the broadcast, we, Paulina and I, would be interested in hearing your voices. Again, the broadcast today is about how the pandemic and teaching has impacted our teaching, our lives, our world. And we want to hear from both from students and from teachers as well. And before we get right into this, Paulina, I want to make mention of Carol Siciliano Rodriguez, who was one of my, well, was my first guest. And that was several months, four months ago. And we were talking about the pandemic and the impact it had on her and her life. And I don't think that we all anticipated we would be here still today in a similar situation, hoping for uh, a much better world. And so, again, as you're listening to the broadcast, we'll, we're interested in hearing your ideas on the topics we'll be sharing uh, today. So let's get right into this, Paulina. If the first idea we wanted to share with everyone is change is inevitable and constant, so embrace it. Uh -huh. So what does that mean to you, Paulina? Well, I I think I'm, I'm not a person of changes. I like things to be the way they're supposed to be. And one of the biggest uh, morals or, or teachings that the pandemic has given me is exactly that. I have to embrace it and, and deal with it and, and flow with it and grow with it and, and to learn a lot. Uh, we can and not, it's not always that predictable. Yeah, and I know that we were talking, here are just some of the things that we were talking about. Perhaps we can expand on these just a little bit. New technologies like Zoom, moving to online classes, balancing family needs, life events, and sharing private space. If you could share any of your thoughts on these ideas. Wow, yes. I think 
The first thing I will say is sharing our private spaces. We are, we are doing it this, I'm doing this from my mother-in-law house because I had no connection in my home, so I had to move. And that's part of the changes. Like we had a plan and then we have to switch it. And I know my students are sharing their houses and their spaces too. And some of them are very private and some of them are very humble and some of them may feel ashamed or of their home or their spaces and, and there's that where teachers have to encourage them to feel comfortable in their in their own houses. The second thing is family needs. I have a daughter and I and she's 12 years old. She is in the last year of school, which is very important for her. It's been a very difficult year. All these changes, not not uh, being able to play with her friends, not being able to talk with her school friends and all these. And um, sometimes I'm in the middle of a class and she jumps in, mom, please, can you help me open this? Ma'am, please, can you do it? And I'm like, wait, I'm working, give me a second. So I think that's uh, super difficult, especially when you're a single mother. Uh, it is even more difficult. You have to handle all the house responsibilities, like cleaning and washing. I've never washed dishes the way I've done it in this pandemic. Like I've watched all the things of my life in these three months. And it's not something that I enjoy. It's not something that I say, oh, I want to watch this. No, I really love going to my class and being with my students. And as the other teachers, there's all the hugs and the smiles and the faces and their ideas and their creativity. But I have to do the dishes, do the laundry and do all the house stuff. And it's, sometimes it's overwhelming. And those are all hard things. Like I share this space right now. I'm in my kitchen. My dog mm -hmm. is sitting right over here. The doorbell could go off. Uh, people yes. could walk, my, my son could walk past or family members. So that's always difficult. And then we were talking a little bit about new technologies. Yes. And I remember when, again, I, I'm Randall from Randall's ESL Cyber Listening Lab with Paulina today. And we're talking about the impact that COVID and the pandemic has had on our lives. And one of the things that I mentioned just a second ago about change being inevitable. I don't know about you, Paulina, but when I heard the word Zoom, now, today, I wish I could go back five years and have invested in the company Zoom. Probably yes. I wouldn't be teaching today. Uh, <laughs> we would be probably doing it just for fun. <laughs> right. But the idea, I, I don't know, and I would be, we would be interested in hearing people's comments yes. about Zoom and technologies because when I heard about Zoom for the first time, I thought, who needs Zoom? What is Zoom? But I wouldn't go back. The it's first time I heard about Zoom, it was because my job asked me to use it. It was like, here, you're going to start teaching next week with Zoom. Congratulations. And I'm like, okay, let's see how it works. And I had to take, I work, with, I work for two different schools. In one of them, I have uh, adults, like, like retired people, grown up. So I have like to sit down and, and say, okay, listen, we're going to learn how to use these. We're going to take an hour for these to play with it so you can continue on our classes because now it's going to be all in Zoom. But I have never heard of Zoom. I've never heard of Teams. I've never heard of all those technologies. So I had to jump into those like right away. I had like a week to set up everything up and, and our students too. And that on, I think for many teachers and teachers have acknowledged to me the fear, the frustration, the uncertainty. And we'll be talking about that in a minute. I mean, the only thing I knew about Zoom was like like a camera or something like that. But the yeah. other thing we before we move on to the next point for me is the impact it's had on life events. Recently, we had a fam yeah, recently we had a family, close family member pass away. And the idea of meeting together, wanting to give people hugs and, and show compassion and empathy, but yet recognizing the social distancing really yeah. creates great heartache when you want to visit and connect with people, but you really can't in the same way. Yes. And and, and those are important things that we, we cannot miss. I mean, especially in Costa Rica, people, is very we are very warm. We like to hug and to kiss and to greet and, and we're very... I would say maybe touchy is the word. Like we're, we're, we're very caring. <laughs> that, That's difficult for us. Like I got to my mom's house and I'm like, hey, hi, morning, <laughs> right? We can <laughs> hug and we can not kiss and we try to be like separate, to have some distance. My daughter is, is graduating this year from school and she hasn't have, she's not going to have a party. She's not going to have a graduation with her friends. She didn't have like um, this spiritual activity that schools do. She, she did it online on Zoom. It's not the same. 
It's not the same. It was nice, but it's not the same. So it, it actually, I mean, this has changed our life the way we were expecting it to be in every way, in everything. And I think for Costa Ricans, for our culture, it's very difficult because we love to like to hawk and to touch and to kiss and we can't. Like even making lines at a supermarket. I don't know if in other countries they do it, but now we have like the like signs where you're supposed to stand because social distancing is very weird for us. Right. Well, let's take a look at some comments before we move on. Uh, some, um, let's see here what we have. Uh, Riyadh said, you made the right decision. Being a teacher is the most noble profession. Thank you, Riyadh. That's, that's, Riyadh has been one of our regular visitors uh, to the program. He'll be on next week. And that's certainly great praise from a wonderful teacher in Tunisia. Thank you. Uh, Carol says, hello, Paulina. I think you, uh, I met you in a beauty salon. <laughs> Once we talked about teaching. Well, you meet people wow. everywhere. That's wonderful. <laughs> Uh, honey, I says, that's, that's my mom. daughter. Oh, is that your mom? Yes, she is. I'm not very good at English, but my little daughter is writing for uh, writing for me. I'm very proud. Well, saludos. Uh, yes. de no, that's wonderful. Uh, Uma says, sadly, with the appearance of the pandemic, we won't teach the way we want. Any suggestions, Paulina, for attracting students' attention? Mm -hmm. Be thinking about that as we're talking yeah. today. Uma, that's a great question, and thank you for sharing. I shared your comment right from the beginning about last week and, and your teacher. So uh, be thinking about that. We want to try to come back and integrate that, if not in the broadcast, but also maybe in the comments. So certainly that is an important uh, comment there. Samaya says, teachers need to develop a wide range of communication skills to make up for the lack of natural face-to-face -face interaction. Maybe that's similar to Uma is talking about yes. how we don't teach in the same way. How can we connect? Um, Carol says, Started, I started teaching by my own and I do it on Zoom. Currently I have 20 private students and Zoom is an amazing and yes. easy tool for us to use. I like it a lot. Yeah, that is great. Uh, Hania says, uh, in Tunisia, we are teaching in class despite this pandemic, but it really, it seems really different. You can't see people's faces like with a mask or something like that. It's really difficult, I will say, because especially with, with children, like don't touch, don't run, be careful, don't sneeze, don't, don't drink the water from your partners. Like, I, I think that's even more difficult. Yeah. And then Anna says, Pau is a very enthusiastic teacher. We really appreciate a lot. And I don't yeah. want to forget, again, Uma talked about this idea. Keep this in mind. Yeah. We won't teach the same way. Any suggestions? Hopefully we can come back to that a little bit more. Sure. Um, so let's go on to the next point. Uh, and the next point is, and again, teachers out there continue to share your comments about how the impact of the pandemic has had on your teaching, your life and students. We want to yeah. hear from you as well. So the uncertainty of tomorrow, this is the second idea, yeah. strengthens my urgency to do better today. Totally. I mean, I'm, I kind of a perfectionist with my classes. So I try to like have beautiful things, beautiful images, to have everything perfect and, and nice. And um, sometimes I think like we are living on a big brother, like everything changes from from the, from one day to the other and one day we have some rules and some things and the next day we have other things. So you try to get the things the best you can the first time because that's probably the, the, the one opportunity that you have to get that material or that class to your students. You don't know next week, how is it going to be? And it requires a lot of hard, hard work, a lot of effort, like a lot of, I've been doing a lot of research, a lot of reading, a lot of uh, listening, looking for many different things to make classes more attractive because you don't know if you are going to have the opportunity to do it the next class because everything might change. Yeah. And, and a lot of teachers, including myself, when this whole pandemic started, it was like, oh, it'll be over in a couple months. Things will yeah, be back to normal. And I realized that uh, for me, uh, one of the thoughts I have is I have no control over tomorrow. So try to be the best me today. Yeah. And I also think of that tomorrow is a gift. So live fully today as well. And not only as teachers, with our families, right? With, our, with the people that we have in our house, the, the closest ones, because again, it's a gift. We don't know tomorrow how it, it's going to be. I don't know if tomorrow 
we will have, I wouldn't say, we will have different conditions. At the beginning of this, we were sent home for, I think it was like a month, and we're now almost in November, closing the year this way. Right. And, and you can think about it. And let me ask Paulina, and this would be a question to everyone. When do you anticipate going back to regular face-to-face -face classes? I mean, is there a timeline? I, I, I would dare to say, like, I, it's too risky because, I mean, we've been extending and extending and extending this for months. Like, at the beginning, it was, uh, I think it was April. And then they say no July, and then no maybe uh, uh, maybe August September. Now they they don't even have a date, and I am prepared, like expecting to start next year the same way. I and I think, and I think I talked with your uh, colleague Kayla Vargas. I think a little bit earlier he was talking like October or November, but I think exactly. that's being pushed pushed out farther and farther. Right now we don't even have like a, like not even a possible date for, for coming back to school. Yeah. So the idea of, again, for me, because I don't know what is coming tomorrow because things are sometimes very precarious. I try to live fully in the moment with family, as you've talked about family and, and so forth, balancing out work and family needs. It just keeps you living in the now, which is, which is for me is very meaningful because it yeah. requires me to think more carefully. Uh, let's look at a couple of other comments that have come up. Uh, uh, we have, uh, Carol says, exactly, we have to do our best today. Tomorrow is a new day and we have new opportunities. Thank you, Carol, very much. And Kayla, your colleague says, our school year ends up in December and it starts in February. According to the authorities, we're going to have hybrid classes. Well, they might be saying that today, right? Exactly. That's the point. That we don't know. Right. And then uh, another comment, dear Paulina, if I'm not mistaken, you teach ESP learners. Yes, I do. So, so what kind of textbooks do you have uh, or utilize? <laughs> and maybe That's you could just spend question. one minute on that. I think it's a really good comment. Maybe you can share just one minute on that and then we'll move on to the next point. Wow. That's interesting question. Um, to be honest with uh, you, I don't have a textbook. I research, I ask my colleagues, I have a very nice colleagues um, who have helped me like uh, learning, relearning the activities. I usually search online a lot for, for business uh, English books. That's what has helped a lot, but, but in a specific book for accounting or in a specific book for secretaries or for fine mechanics. I've been working on a vocabulary for fine mechanics because we don't have something that is helpful for us. And I've been helped a lot by my boyfriend who is a, a, a tech too he helps me a lot with that but I, I can't say a book and I would like to and if you know a book that will help that would be awesome it's a lot of research it's yeah. It's, it's and I think these are going back thank you Paula I think this is going to number one change is inevitable and constant exactly. and the other idea of uncertainty so feel free maybe Kaylor can also your colleague can share some ideas or anyone out there about resources, because I think traditional textbooks, while they worked in the classroom, it, it, things are changing. They don't work for us. And they don't work for us. Like they don't work for, when you're teaching, for example, I'm teaching uh, how to work with a mailing machine or how to turn on a lift or how to do an electrical circuit. Yeah. And one of the things, and again, thank you very much. And we're certainly will reach out to any of the viewers yeah. to share their comments as well. Uh, let's go on to the next point. So first of all, we talked a little bit about uh, change is inevitable, embrace it. We talked, the next point was uncertainty of tomorrow helps us become a better us today. And the next idea is our own pain and discomfort help me become more empathetic to our own struggles of others and I know that we were talking a little bit before about this. So if I may ask, in what ways have your own challenges helped you become more empathetic to students, to teachers, to colleagues, and to just the public as a whole? Well, um, I would say, and I, I think it's the main point for me is like, if as a teacher, you don't have empathy, you are not going to be a good teacher. You're like, you have to have the capacity to put in your students choose and into their realities. Uh, some of our students 
doesn't have internet connection at home. Some of them just have like a very cheap phone and it's not good for classes. So it was the same way in the past. If you're not empathetic with your peers, then you have the wrong job, I would say. And sometimes was with my daughter, when she's in her classes and she's frustrated because she can't get into the class and she's super stressed because my mind can't get and the teacher is going to say, I'm going to be led. What should I do? And I, I'm in the same position the other way with my students. Where I say, okay, I have a, a 12 year student or a 15 year student on the other side, probably with the same problems or even worse, because at least I have some economical stability in my houses, but sometimes the students don't. And, and you're thinking about, let's say you have a family with five children, you know, from, you know, uh, eight years old to 15 years old. I mean, I'm assuming most families do not have five different computers. Um, and so, yeah, yeah. as you mentioned, you, you, these different resource issues where people might not have a reliable connection or, you know, devices enough to support learning in that particular family. Especially when you're teaching a second language, it's also like they don't have someone who helps them at home with the assignments. They might find a, a, an older brother that can help them with math and science. Even their, their mothers can ask the questions they have, a questionnaire from their teacher. But with a second language, it's more difficult. They don't usually have the support. One of my students told me, teacher, I'm trying to do this, but I just have a dictionary and I have to look for all the words. Just imagine, like translating word for word. And even you say, don't do it because we don't think it's a good idea. They don't know what to do. So I think the first is that empathy has uh, led us to give them some specific tips and skills to deal with the different activities uh, in a better way and, and maybe to make it even more simple for them. Yeah. And I, I think going back to empathy, when you think about, you know, homes, and I just mentioned about a family that have five children and maybe the mom says, well, go ask your brother to help you with that math problem. And the brother, he's working on his homework at the same yeah. time. And one of the things you mentioned about hugging, you know, yeah. touching, communicating. To me, when I think of empathy, I think of that as an emotional hug of reaching yeah. out and connecting. And I would be interested, I think both of us, Paulina, would be interesting in how teachers have reached out to their students and parents in a more empathetic way. And one of the things for me, this is something I've mentioned before on a different broadcast is listening, especially to students who say, oh, I wasn't able to do my homework because the internet connection was bad. Instead of saying, come on, you know? Yeah, it's it's like you have to understand the different conditions everybody has and be comp comprehensible. Like, you, you can do it. Okay, I'm, I'm going to give you extra time. Did you have any specific problem? Is there something else I can help you with? And sometimes with their parents too, because for parents, it's really frustrating not to be able to help their children. Right. And I think that people like you and others who are balancing a career at home and children and the needs of children at the same time can be extremely yeah. different. So I think for me, when I think about my own pain and discomfort, I think about family members or students who reach out and say, Right now, I have a family member who is sick. Yes. He's lost a job, uh, job instability. And so instead of saying and discounting that, I hopefully I listen longer, listen better, because I think there's a reason why we have two ears and one mouth. Yes. Right? <laughs> is to be able to listen more and more deeply. Yes, exactly. That's really yeah, important. That's the best thing you can do for someone sometimes. They just need to speak and take it out of their hearts. Okay. Oh, and we have another comment. William, Sarah, is, is that your dad? Yes. All right. Well, I, I, I told you, Tico families are very supportive. Like we're very close. And that's great. And we've seen a lot of support on broadcasts where family members chime in, whether they can speak English or not, yeah. just seeing the presence. My uh, parents, really and, and it's, it's part of the empathy. Like my parents don't speak English. Yeah. Uh, but I know they are there and I feel like, oh, there is my dad uh, encouraging. And that's that type of empathy as well. Yeah. And I think one of the reasons why I started these broadcasts is to provide forums where people can reach out and connect with others. And also for teachers, uh, Randall's also like listening to a teacher that is having the same struggles that they are having in different countries is like, oh, it's not only me. 
that's empathy too. And that's probably a hug for many people uh, out there saying like, where do I find materials? What do, where, how can I make groups with Zoom or with Teams? And how do you encourage the students? Well, we are in the same position. Most of us are in the same position, dealing with the same problems and try to do our best. And this is a really key point, Paulina. I'm glad you brought this up because sometimes we work in a vacuum Yes. You know, and sometimes we don't realize that the colleague who has never used Zoom, who is struggling and balancing, you know, their personal life and work is really like pulling. I don't have much hair. I got a haircut. You know, it's pulling their hair out. And that I think I would be interested in hearing from other teachers as well of the support that you receive. What kind of support have you received from colleagues? How has that been really helpful? I have, my colleagues are the best. I really love them, like Kaylor, Carmen, Cristina, Rebe, Adriana. Sometimes we just chat on our WhatsApp group. You just chat and, and, and have some fun. Five minutes of laughing will make anybody's day. And then you relax and you say, okay, let's calm down. Let's deal with this this way. We can deal with this in the other way. And we are in the same boat all together, feeling the same. Just five minutes with those colleagues sometimes are like, oh, my day. Yeah, and I think there are a lot of teachers, too. I've heard from teachers over the last several months who have lost jobs. Yes. Uh, job insecurity. Uh, yes. Not sure whether they're going to you know, receive a paycheck. And so that type of compassion, I think that even with myself, you know, you think that I think job insecurity can impact anyone. Oh. And, and as long as this, you know, the pandemic continues, I think finding ways to reach out to people and say, I'm here, I'm willing to help you. Mm -hmm. I think exactly. really important. And this is one of the reasons, Paulina, I created that swap shop that is happening on Saturday is giving teachers from around the world the opportunity to connect with each other, to share ideas, to be supportive and so forth. Great. That's Great ideas. Uh, oh, Hazel says, Pao, is that another uh, colleague or student? Or okay. colleague, yes. Super. All right. Well, so far we've talked about, again, we've talked about the struggle of having more empathy. You mentioned, oh. Paulina, about not only with students and parents, but with colleagues yes. who are really struggling. Uh, what I'd like to talk about now is a little bit mm -hmm. about small acts of kindness can help alleviate and, and dispel despair and hopelessness. And I'd like to talk just a little bit about what types of small acts of kindness can we um, share with others, again, teachers, family members, students that make a difference in their lives during this great pandemic? I think we have teachers, we have the power to change people's lives. That's for sure, for sure. And either positive or negative, a small comment, just one word that comes out of your mouth your mouth will empower or discourage students. And that's something that we haven't, that the pandemic hasn't taken us because we still have the power of work. Like we, you can talk to the students and tell them like, you're doing a great job. I really like what you're doing. Sometimes I tell my students, teach me, how do you get those beautiful backgrounds on your papers? Or where did you get those beautiful stickers for, for this uh, assignment? I really like them. Can you, can you help me with this? Because I don't know. And they feel like, oh my God, I mean, uh, uh, she's, she's giving me some importance. She's liking my job. She's enjoying what I'm doing. I, I remember that one of my students, I received, papers uh, by WhatsApp, mail, any place. I had received some documents in paper, like physical. And one of my students did a great job. It was beautiful, like the way she worked, so organized and clean and neat. So I said, oh my God, I have to, I have to really thank her for this. So and I think there's a real, those small little things make a difference. I mentioned last week and talking and using the analogy of dropping a small pebble in yes. a puddle of water and the ripple in the fleck. And I think anything that we can do to share a, a word of kindness, a small deed, a comment can make a big difference. And one of the things I noticed with my students in the past where I had very strict, you know, homework deadlines, you know, if you don't turn it in by tomorrow morning, then it's late, you get zero points. I know. And I think what I found is that sometimes allowing for some more latitude uh, some flexibility. can provide more, uh, you know, healing for people in, you know, difficult situations as well. 
So again, giving, uh, doing small acts of kindness, I think can make a, a big difference. Even people out in the community that we might meet as well. Yes. All right. Let's see what else we have. Uh, Riyadh says the most valuable resource that all teachers have is each other without collaborate without yeah. our collaboration, our growth will be limited to our own perspectives. And Riyadh, this is excellent. I know you've shared that before. You know, the most valuable resource is one another. And I think what this means is, is doing so in a non-competitive way. Exactly, just supporting. Yeah, instead of saying, oh, I have a teaching technique that is really unique and I'm not going to share with you because yeah. I want to be teacher of the month. No, no, I'm sure we're saying that. Okay. And you know, as English teachers, we have an advantage. We all speak the same language. Yeah. Wherever we are, we speak the same language. Yeah. In any way, but we do it. So we can really connect with people around the world. Yeah. And again, the idea of Riyadh mentioning about collaboration of growth is important. Uh, Yendi, is that your teacher, uh, student? I got my student. I, yeah, I have another student. The, the first level of English, the basics, and these are the great students. So they are right. being That's good. As Sonia says, you are an exceptional teacher. Wow. There you are. Uh, great to hear that. And Karen says, the help that teachers like Powell offer at this time makes learning easier. I watched oh. the broadcast with Sophie and we're proud of our mother. Oh, wow. my girls. Oh, that's a wonderful. Karen, thank you very much for sharing such a tender comment about your mom. Well, let's go on. We've talked a little bit about small acts of kindness. And the last thing we'd like to share today, and again, there are many ideas. Yes. Right? We're certainly interested in hearing you as the last idea is adversity is the changing agent that leads to growth. So if you could just share a little, a little bit, Paulina, of how the challenges have helped you grow individually as a teacher, that would be wonderful. I think I like challenges. I have always liked them. And every time I have a challenge in front of me, I have the best attitude towards it. And Obviously, this new teaching process is challenging. As I said, I've been looking for a lot of materials online, a lot of videos. I've been recording myself, which is something that I've never done. I've been recording myself for videos because I found that students can stop the video and go back and, and they can even listen to those short videos when they when they are in their houses or at night or in the morning or when they are in their boxes on the way to work because some of my students work. And uh, if you take advantage of adversity, I think you are going to make a lot of it, like preparing materials. And there are things that I've never done before. I usually go get a textbook, make copies of it, like prepare some materials, write it on the board. But now, since we don't have those things, we have to be very creative, like preparing things, recording videos, making listenings. Like sometimes I don't find a good listening for the specific topic, so I have to record myself in the conversation and then from that prepare everything out of it. And uh, I think if we have our best positive attitude, we will learn a lot from this. Like we will grow out and change. There are things that I will probably never do again uh, after this. Like I will, I've always used Facebook as a tool with some of my students, the ones, especially the ones that I know I will have three years. So we have some Facebook groups where we share. But uh, I think now it's, it goes beyond that. And I think one of the things, when I look as a result of the pandemic, and certainly we feel very somber, we, we feel very sad for so many people who have lost their lives during the pandemic. Absolutely. Um, and if we look at the change that has come out of that is, again, maybe greater empathy, greater yeah. growth and so forth. But there are certain things that I just never would go back to. Yes. In other words, when I look at Zoom, I think Zoom or other technologies that are similar will always from now on forever be a part of what I'm doing as part of training or teaching. I love them for speaking skills. Like I've seen how my students have improved their speaking skills by because they have to speak. They are not going to be sitting there looking at each other for 40 minutes or 20 minutes just like this. In regular classes, they might be distracted with something. But if you are sitting in front of the computer, you need to speak. So I love, I love it for speaking skills. And um, as you said, there are things that I will never do again that I will probably change forever. I love the idea of, of preparing materials 
we're looking for specific materials uh, about certain topics that are interesting for my students. And one of the things too, if, if I could say that I would never go back to, I know I've mentioned this before and I'm gonna miss names, but over the last four months as I've done these broadcasts, I've met such wonderful people online, met new colleagues from Brazil, uh, from Costa Rica, from Tunisia, from I can't the Philippines, just around the world. That in the past, while I was working in a kind of a bubble, yeah. this allowed me to open up and and connect more deeply with the people out there in new ways. You also give also give us a face. As I said at the beginning, I've worked with your listening activities forever. Like those are the ones that I I use the most. But now I have a face with it. Yeah, okay, great. Let's take a look at some last comments and then we'll close with some, uh, some final thoughts. Um, uh, Carol uh, from Costa Rica, says, Costa Rica says, I love my colleagues that we work. We share lesson plans, ideas, strategies that make us not feel stressed. And I think that's a key because sometimes they, people feel very stressed. What is going to come next? What am I going to do tomorrow? is absolutely. Uh, Ricardo says, she is my girlfriend. I'm very proud of her. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Ricardo. Uh, very He's much. He's the assistant that has been helping us with the lights and the setup. <laughs> right. From the very beginning, from earlier yeah. today as we were getting ready. Thank you very much, Ricardo, very much. Uh, Hazel says, the most complete English teacher I know. Wow. <laughs> you. You're the full package. That's great. I, to know. I do my best. Okay. Um, and, and then Carol says, difficult situations make us stronger, exactly. braver, appreciate every moment, embrace it. This yeah. new era has shown us that we are capable and are awesome teachers. I yes, that. that's true. That's true. It's just to have a positive uh, attitude and, and be open-minded to these things. Sometimes you can sit down and cry your situation or you can move on and, and work with it and, and, and make it better for you and your students and your family life too. Absolutely. Well, well, Paulina, it's been a pleasure in visiting with you today to share these five ideas, new perspectives. And certainly if you have a chance to uh, look at the comments afterwards, often come in, comments come in after the broadcast, be able to look and review those. And again, thank you so much for sharing your perspectives uh, today with us. Thank you so much for, for having me. Um, I really enjoyed it. I think as teachers, we have each other. That's super important. And to be able to help each other is the best nowadays with all the situation. And, and it's also, I mean, the pandemic has given us the opportunity to, to be connected more to for. Okay, thank you very much. Well, I, and we want to thank you. Paulina and I would thank you, like to thank you very much for joining the broadcast today. And as a reminder, uh, again, this Saturday we have a broadcast. It is by invitation only. You just need to contact me on the Teacher Swap Shop and next week with Riyad Kuma. He's going to be talking about building your own presence on YouTube from the ground up. I think that will be a very informative broadcast as well. Just like every time, we greatly appreciate, I greatly appreciate your ideas, your comments as we close this episode. It's your voice, your ideas that change the world. So signing off for now, have a wonderful day and an even better tomorrow.